This video is sponsored by Echo D Super Baby Diaper and Wet Wipes. I'm Abna and I'm currently a service personnel. Um, I track my cycle with this app called Flow. And sometimes my cycle is not really um, consistent, so it, I can be a day or two late, but I'll still have my period. So there was this time, my cycle was like um, one day late, two, three, and then the fourth day, I was like, no, um, something is wrong somewhere. So after class one day, I went to the pharmacy to get a test kit, and when I tested, it was two lines, <laughs> but I wasn't convinced. So I went to the clinic and then this doctor, Miss, I don't know whether she was serious, but she diagnosed me with UTI, that was urinary tract infections. I was still not convinced, so I decided to go to the hospital. So when I went to the hospital and the doctor was like, you've not seen your period and what do you think it is? So he was like, go and do a scan. So when I was doing the scan, this the sonographer was smiling to me and I was like, why? Why is he smiling to me? And he was like, look, you have a life growing inside. Immediately I found out I was pregnant. The closest thing I thought was like having an abortion because I'm coming from a home where my mom is strict and everyone like you need to go to school, like be what you want to be in future and she didn't do boyfriend and stuff, but when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, no, I can't keep this. And then how am I going to face my family, my friends? Maybe there'll be stigma and everything. So I wanted to even secretly have an abortion without telling my baby's father, but I thank God it didn't happen. Yes. So with, um, I stayed with my mom, so I kept it a secret till so even after birth, so it's only my mom who knew about it. So there was one time I was seriously sick in school and then I called my mom to come over to take care of her. I was living alone. So when she came, she spent the weekend with me. She was about leaving on Monday. So I just had to break the news to her and she was surprised. Um, she was very surprised. So at the time I broke the news to my mom, I was seven months gone already. Being pregnant, it wasn't easy for the first trimester. It wasn't easy because the morning sickness, even to a point, I didn't want to brush. I didn't want to brush my because I was scared I would throw up. And when I would throw up, it comes like repeatedly, non stop. So some, there are times I wouldn't go out from my room, I would be indoors the whole day. So I wouldn't even brush for like two weeks. <laughs> yes. And um, getting to the third trimester, my baby was a big baby, so like the weight and I was tired most of the time. See, in our society, everyone or every mom wants her daughter to get married before she gets pregnant. But so for, once you get pregnant without getting married, there's this tag on you as born one. Yes, and I feel it has had a lot of impact on like young girls because they don't want to mingle with others and then they find it difficult because when you go and you're like, oh, this person is born one and she hasn't been married and then she has had a child or a baby out of wedlock. But it's not all the time that you have a child out of wedlock. Maybe you'd want to have a child before you get married. Right now, I'm the only one who has had a baby among my, my family, like being young to have a baby. Sometimes I feel odd, I feel awkward because um, I didn't take my time or something, but that's not the case. I'm comfortable. I'm cool with it. Yes. Once I'm able to do the little things to make my daughter happy, I'm fine. It wasn't easy because sometimes I would want to take a book to read and I would just sleep off like most of the times. So I was even scared to a point I would trail that semester. Yes, but I didn't even trail. I didn't trail the paper. Okay, so initially I wanted a baby boy and then my partner also wanted a, a baby girl. So one time I was sick and then I had to do an emergency scan. So when I did a scan, I found that I was having a girl. So I was like, okay, fine. He was extremely excited because he was like, he won over me. <laughs> okay, so um, I was... I was due, my due date was on the 12th of January, that was this year. 
So I, my last appointment was on 30th December. So when I went, the doctor was like, I should come and see him again the following week. So on the 31st, I was all alone and in school. I didn't come home. So I was feeling some cramps and then I, I was like, no, this is not normal. So I called my baby's father's mom and then I told her about it. She was like, I should go to the hospital. But it was around 11 p.m. that day. So I was like, no, I would wait and go in the morning. So in the morning, I called an Uber and I went. I didn't know whether he saw my situation because he saw I was in pain. So he called and um, I called the Uber and I went. So he was speeding. When I got to the hospital, my doctor saw me at the entrance and was laughing because I was all smiling. She was like, I don't look like someone who is in labor, but they should suck me, I should go home. I was like, no. So they prepared a bed for me and then they admitted me. So when they checked, I was already three centimeters dilated. And it has always been my fear that because I was staying alone, I was scared to give birth in the room. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, and um, when they checked, I was three centimeters dilated. So I got in around 8, um, 8 a.m. in the morning and I had my baby around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Labor is like, it's painful, it's not, it's not easy. Because when I got there, there were two other women who were in forced labor and then like, they were all cool, but I was really in pain. I was smacking my fingers. I was there alone, like there was no one with me. I was there alone. So the nurses would come, come and check on me every hour. And to the extent they rub their hands on my back to give me a relief, yes. And labor is not easy. <laughs> It's painful, it's really painful, and there's no word like in the world that could describe what labor feels. The reaction was priceless, like I was I was crying, they put her on me, and then all of a sudden she opened her eyes and she was looking at me. And that's like it's so I'm now a mom from today on. Yes, well I was excited. Breastfeeding was was okay mm, until like 29 days where um, I had this emotional breakdown where the breast milk stopped flowing at once. So I had to resort to buying baby formula. Yes. Initially, I, I do when I'm going to school, I pump, I, I pump bottles down for my baby and then she takes it. But I considered also including um, buying formula not, like alongside with breastfeeding, but once the milk stopped flowing, yes. I introduced solids around four months, yes. So I started giving her mashed bananas and then I started this normal, our normal corn porridge, yeah. So when she was around five months, I started introducing her to Cerelac and she started taking our local food. She likes emba with okro, pampo and okro. She likes rice, yes. She likes grapes too now, yes. She's her favorite. Yes, um, but I think when she started teething and then she was losing appetite. It's not a battle. You have to fight before she eats. <laughs> yes. Okay, so in the beginning, I didn't know babies grow fast from zero to three months. So we bought a lot of zero to three months clothing. By um, one month, she had outgrown all the clothes, and I was like, "How? How did it happen so fast?" Because she was growing big. Yeah, she's she's thick, and she was growing big, and I regret, I regret wasting money buying clothes from zero to three months. Yes. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't easy because you wouldn't have the kind of sleep you used to get in the past because you have to wake up, you have to breastfeed her. Sometimes she'll be crying at night. Yeah, you have to go through a whole lot. It has affected me because from first January to now, I haven't had the kind of sleep I used to have. <laughs> but I could sleep the whole day, but right now, I would sleep around 10, wake up at 5, prepare and go to work. Yes, and... What surprises me, like me is like, um, how I'm able to take care of the baby, like, I'm able to nurture her. 
I teach her some, a little thing. She's just 10 months, but she knows quite a lot that a 10 month old wouldn't even know. Yes. No, my body hasn't changed. No one bit. I'm still the same old <laughs> person. Yeah, I haven't changed. You see, I'm slim. So people used to say, when you are slim, when you give birth, you go fat. But it didn't happen to me. Yes. Um, you know, my mom is, no, she's kind of like a single parent. And then she has to single-handedly raise me put me through school and then this has happened. So it really goes on her. And it also got on me to the extent that I began thinking a lot, like what have I put her through and stuff to the extent, even if I go out to go and buy something at the shop, I would forget what I've even come to buy and then how I've even managed to even go there. Sometimes I'll be walking and talking to myself to the point I thought I was losing my mind. And this continues for like close to eight months and I thank God I'm recovering. The baby is more like me. And of course, she, she likes to eat me. I, I like to eat, but it doesn't show my body. Yes, and she likes to sleep. I also like to sleep a lot, yes. Yes, there are lots of challenges being a mother. Sometimes you have to leave your baby, you go to class, you are worried, like, is she eating well, is she sleeping? Sometimes to, like, financial problems. Like, I don't have, sometimes I'm not financially stable. I'm a service personnel, sometimes money to buy her clothes, food, diapers and stuff. For example, me, my daughter needs this, this dress, so I would see it online and then I was like, oh, this dress is beautiful. So I'll be thinking, hey, I have to get this money and buy this dress for my babes so that she'll look nice. But I, I, I don't have the means, so yes, I'll just be looking at the dress and then be imagining my baby in the dress. <laughs> yes. He was in Accra and I was in Kumasi, so he travels like at night, sometimes to come and see me, maybe for a day or two. He takes care of me, he makes sure I eat and I I don't miss my appointments and others. Yes. And um, he sends money monthly and eh, but for some time now because the business is not really going and with this all this COVID and everything, like he hasn't really been performing too much. Like yeah. Right now I'm living with a family friend and then she's helping me financially take care of the child. My mom didn't like my relationship with him, so I had to force my way through. And then my family also didn't like him. Yes, but I didn't. I still didn't listen to them. I went on with my relationship with him because at the end of the day, it's him and I, not my family and me. At some point, um, I I felt like I should have listened to my family. Another point, so or another day, I feel oh, like I made the right decision because. He wanted a child and then I'm also happy we have a child together because we have been together for like eight years and counting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I don't I, I don't want um my family what my family should say should influence what my baby's father and I have. Because right now um my mom went to see his his family alone. She didn't go with my family members and then it's a whole back and forth situation. My baby's father hasn't seen his child for like the past 10 months now and it's really bad. My mom doesn't want me to go and want him to come and see her and she doesn't want me to go either. But one of these days I'm planning to go and to sneak her to go and see her father because she needs the father figure in her life. I can't do all that and then she can't call someone else her father whilst she has a father. We've been together for like eight years and then we are, we are planning to build a future one day. But right now the family has set in, it's, it's, I, I, I feel my family is like a bit of a, a, a hindrance for my relationship with him. Because his mom loves me, I love her, his family is cool with me, his dad knows me, like most of his family members know me. 
So right now, I feel like my family should also come to a conclusion that, well, I have a baby with him, and they should try and consider our relationship and then so we can make it work. The most rewarding thing is being a mom and then the way my daughter receives me when I come back from work, like she's happy, I'm happy, we are both happy, everyone is happy. And then, so I don't regret not having an abortion. A little advice is in this life, you can't do everything 100% to please people around you. No matter how you try to do what you want to do, they will still find faults with what you do. I made a bold decision by keeping my baby. If I had aborted my baby and then I would be smiling around everyone as if nothing has happened. In future, when I, I get married and I want my baby and I'm having problems with fertility, no one will know what I have been through because I did what I did in the past to please them. But they didn't know what I did in my past would have an effect on me in the future. So I want to say that just live your life the way you want to be. Don't let anyone influence you, give you any bad influence or anything. Just do what's best for you. Yes, and then the stigma about moments, please, <laughs> it should kindly end because we are all human. And then it's our choice. Yes, some people choose to give birth, others choose to abort. This video was brought to you by Echo D Super Baby Diaper and wet wipes made with bamboo.